It's 1932. You're seated at a very exclusive gathering hosted by one Abby Aldrich Rockefeller. Her husband, the junior counterpart to arguably the wealthiest man in American history, is engaged in his latest construction project, a sprawling, cutting-edge city within a city in the middle of Manhattan. And he's keen to crown it with an exclamation point. A 60-foot mural in the lobby of 30 Rock. John Jr.'s son Nelson wants a big-name artist, but Matisse is too busy, and Picasso hasn't replied to a telegram addressed to Pierre Picasso. So the Rockefellers, a family synonymous with capitalist wealth, turn to the man that Abby favors, an artist whose epic talents are surpassed only by his socialist notoriety. Diego Rivera. Maybe the Rockefellers don't think it's that risky. After all, Rivera has shown that he could work with capitalists. He'd been kicked out of the Communist Party USA for accepting a $10,000 commission to paint the famous Detroit Industry Mural for the Ford family. So John Jr. and Rivera sign a contract. It's worth twenty-one thousand dollars, and it comes with a guarantee that the mural's themes will remain neutral, and that no changes will be made to the piece ex post facto. Rivera's plan for the mural, which he depicted only in a rudimentary sketch, is pretty innocuous. It calls for a depiction of the forces of capitalism, socialism, science, and industry in contrast to one another. And it would be called "Man at the Crossroads." Work gets underway, but shortly thereafter, the New York World Telegram publishes an article about the mural, attacking its socialist themes. Rivera is pissed, and he doubles down, instructing his team of painters to add a portrait of, well, you know. Rivera believes that his close relationship with the Rockefellers will protect him, but just to be safe, he makes sure that no preparatory sketches for the mural depict Lenin. If you visit the lobby of 30 Rockefeller Plaza today, you will immediately notice that Rivera's work is well, it's not there. Instead, you'll find a mural that fawningly champions the progress wrought by capitalism. With a handsome likeness of good old Abe Lincoln to boot, what happened to Man at the Crossroads? It's actually pretty silly. One day, a laborer who was tasked to paint the wall above the mural accidentally spilled some extra paint on the face of Lenin. Raymond Hood, who was overseeing the construction of Thirty Rock, came to inspect what he assumed would be the negligence of one of his workers. But what he discovered ended with him sounding the alarm all the way up the chain of command. The Rockefeller family politely asked Rivera to remove the portrait of Lenin, and Rivera politely counter-offered to insert portraits of John Brown, Nat Turner, and good old Abe. In truth, Rivera would rather see Frida Kahlo cut off all her hair than give up Comrade Lenin, and he held fast. And despite fellow artists, academics, and gallerists raising Cain, the mural was chipped off the wall in 1934. Rivera was paid his commission in full, but this didn't satisfy him or his supporters. He made public his intention to repaint the mural anywhere it was accepted, and fittingly enough, this ended up being the Palacio de Bellas Artes in his native Mexico City. If you visit the Palacio today, you will be greeted by Man, controller of the universe, a near replica of the original Rockefeller Center mural, if noticeably smaller. And if you've learned any lessons today, it's that any painting by Diego Rivera should be inspected very carefully. Look closely, and you'll see that added to what could be called this version of Man at the Crossroads. Is a little likeness of John Jr. 
Junior was known as a teetotaler, but here he's shown drinking and cavorting with a lady directly beneath a petri dish of syphilis. What a shame he didn't invite good old Abe Lincoln to the party. <laughs> 